Hello dear viewers, I'm George from Ireland and um, here behind me you can see where um, Mustafa Rashid Pasha lived um, for uh, a few years in the 1830s. So um, he was uh, the um, Ottoman ambassador to the court of St. James um, at that time and he was one of the most notable Ottoman statesmen of the 19th century. So if I'm correct he was born in Istanbul as in the capital of the Ottoman Empire and is now the largest city in Turkey, not the capital. A lot of people get that wrong. That's that's, that's Istanbul. Um, and uh, his father was a was a senior functionary, but uh, when Mustafa was only ten, his father died. Now, in those days, most most um, uh, Turks didn't have a surname. They were often known as, in this case, Mustafa, the son of Rashid, and the daughter and the, and the son of whoever his mother's name, because. It's pretty unlikely that someone's got the same first name as you, um, but his father has the same name as your father, and his mother has the same name as your mother. Um, so that's how they went. It's only in the 1930s when Mustafa Kemal Ataturk insisted they all adopt a surname. And Pasha is like a title, honorific, and that comes after the name, not before, unlike in European languages. Um, Anyhow, so he was at a madrasa, a religious school, thinking he'd be a mullah, but that, did, that didn't happen. He entered the civil service and he was rapidly promoted. He was in, he was in Greece, um, ruling one of the counties there at the time of the uh, uh, Greek War of Independence, which obviously didn't go the way of, 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 for the Ottoman, of the Ottoman Empire. And Yunanistan, as the Turks call it, became independent. Uh, in, in most Muslim countries, it's called Yunanistan. Um, and some of the Egyptians, nominally part of the part of the Ottoman Empire, even took the side of the side of the Greek insurgents. So that was a serious reverse, reverse for them. And really, from that from then on, it was just decline after decline for the Ottoman Empire. But it was still a formidable power um, uh, in the early 19th century. And now, um, Mustafa Rashid was one of the first to perceive that the Ottoman Empire would not long survive if it didn't have a mighty ally, and he sought to forge alliances with uh, the United Kingdom. He perceived Russia as the principal foe of the Ottoman Empire. Indeed, Russia and the Ottomans fought six times in 200 years. So, um, moreover, the majority of the British subjects were Muslims, a fact that not many people are aware of. So, therefore, persuade the, the, the British that they had to have a cordial relationship with the sublime port. Otherwise, the, the, the um, Sultan, who was also, also the Caliph, would persuade Sunni Muslims everywhere to rise up against the British. But um, So the British largely fell for this one. There were other reasons for the UK being, being um, pro-Ottoman. Because um, in the First World War, of course, the United Kingdom and the Ottoman Empire went to war against each other. And indeed, this, the Sultan, who was a Khalifa, successor of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, exhorted all the faithful to rise up against uh, the infidel, uh, but very few of them did so. Um, anyhow, so the, 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 his, his sway amongst Sunni Muslims around the world was greatly exaggerated. He didn't have that with Shia Muslims. So um, the British wanted to prevent the Russians getting a warm water port, and so not much has changed. Obviously, the, the Russian military has been, has been in Syria for decades, uh, even in the height of the Cold War, when it was the Soviet Navy, not the Russian Navy. Um, Anyway, so he was he was sent abroad as ambassador to Paris, a post he held thrice. Uh, he, he spoke fairly fluent French, and that was the language of diplomacy. So when he was here, he was mostly speaking, um, mostly speaking uh, French to British diplomats and politicians, not English. Uh, he had a very good relationship with Lord Ponsonby, a key courtier, an Irishman, and later on with Viscount Palmerston when he was Prime Minister. And that was crucial in, in, in um, strengthening relations between the British Empire and the Ottoman Empire in the run-up to the uh, to the uh, Crimean War, um, this uh, whole accusation that Russia had broken the Treaty of Unkia Skelesi, which forbade it from um, constructing fortifications on on the uh, uh, Crimean Peninsula. Now, I'm not sure if Russia acknowledged where they built them. It might have been the typical uh, Russian player. Oh no, absolutely not. It's blindingly obvious, but what you're seeing is not there. Um, anyway, so the Ottoman Empire was fighting against Russia. It was also fighting against in in Wallachia, as in as in Romania. Um, and uh, the, the French and the Piedmontese indeed joined the Ottoman side as well. Um, Austria-Hungary, well, sorry, the Austrian Empire was neutral, supposed to be a Russian ally, and then signaled they come in against the Russians, and that's why the, the Russians sort of backed down, admitted that they lost. Also, Nicholas I had died. His brother, Alexander II, came in, who was much more amenable to making peace. Um, so back at home... Uh, Mustafa Rashid, uh, he uh, realized that the state was badly in need of reform, but issued um, 
uh, the the um, Edict of Gulhena, Gulhena, as in um, Rose Garden, not the White House Rose Garden, about wholesale reform began Tanzimat, a uh, reform process that was going on for about 27 years, long after his death, um, because uh, their bureaucratic system was Byzantine in its complexity, it was sclerotic, it was nepotistic, and there was a great deal of peculation. Um, but not enough was, was, done, was done to bring it up to date. He realized there were large numbers of, of people, minorities, who were alienated from the state, highly disaffected Christians, Shia Muslims, even Sunni Muslims who were not ethnically Turkish, and they've been losing a losing territory. They must feel they had a crack at the whip. They had a chance to rise in society, and indeed he abol abolished servitude, at least formally. Um, so that was, he died of a heart attack in, in Istanbul and indeed he is buried there. So he married twice, he had five sons, I'm not sure if he truly had any daughters because, well, maybe daughters don't count. Or it could have been he just genuinely didn't have daughters. So this was the Ottoman Empire, not Empire, Embassy for many years. An, an 1811 building by a notable architect, Stuckoed, I forget who, who it was, here on Bryanston Square. Um, right, so uh, that's that. Um, Mustafa Reshid Pasha, a, a notable politician and civil servant of the Ottoman Empire. Toodaloo!